You ready? Well, I think people will be happy to see you. A little bit anyway, huh? What do you think? Yeah? You gonna stick around? Or what? You gonna stick around? Hmm? Okay. Well, Elsa has joined us today, so that's good. I think she's getting back into the routine. Because when we used to do these frequently, she would just show up. But so now I think we got her. Right? You gonna, you gonna hang with me or what? Yeah? Okay. Hang with me. Don't clean yourself in the middle of the podcast, all right? Or whatever. All right. So <clears throat> let me get into some questions here. Got quite a few. Um, okay. So it's a question about, so do you think that your late start allowed you to see ballet technique from a more mature perspective, um, that kind of thing. Uh, yes, so here, here's the, there's a great benefit to being an adult or mostly an adult. So I, I think when I mean, a, if we talk about adult, it's, I would say somewhere in the vicinity of you know, 15, 16 years old and up, but it depends on the person obviously, but you know, if someone reaches the age of reason, which may be younger, maybe 13, 14, 15, but at any rate, at any age that is adult-like, the benefit is that you can learn how to dance and teach at the same time, right? Or let's say you want to be a choreographer or something. Are you leaving? Well, you're doing a weird thing. You can be a choreographer as well. So whatever it is that you wish to do, you can learn it all at the same time if you begin at a later age. So I have some thoughts about and I've had these thoughts for a long time about maybe a later start is better. So I would say something like 12, 13 years old might be a good way to go. Um, but again, it depends on the individual person and the attributes that they have. So yeah, I mean, what would happen with my late start, so I was probably yeah, 18, 19 when I got serious. The reason I went to Russia in the first place was just because I just they couldn't answer my questions, right? So I had five, six years of, you know, training, if you could call it that. And I, you know, so I started to sort of know enough to start asking questions that ended up, that they couldn't answer, none of them. And I, I, I tried many different teachers from California, New York, I just went all over the place to try to find the right, and it was always the same. And so that's what I'll just, I mean, obviously, you know, when you're, uh, especially a young man, you idolize or at least follow, read books about, look at video of Barushnikov, Nureyev, Vasilyev, etc. And I just thought, you know, rationally, like, well, if these guys could achieve this level, then why can't we? You know, they're just people. There's nothing magical about Russian people, except my wife. <clears throat> So I just went, let's go to Russia and, and, and find out what's there. And then, of course, you know, the rest is kind of history. Actually, that leads into another question. Somebody asked about my studies in Russia, how it was, if I learned something valuable, what was the most important and significant for you while learning from Russian teachers? So, yeah, I, I can talk a little bit about that. So it's a long... It's a long adventure was Russia, so that ended up being several years. Um, let's see what I want to share right now that will be relevant. So in terms of studying, let, I, let's do this. Let's kind of skip the dancing bit. Like I began in St. Petersburg and studied uh, with uh, Vitaly Afanaskov and, and another teacher, Dalgushin, and I um, had some interesting interactions, meetings with, uh, not meetings, but sort of discussions with um, Dudinskaya before she passed away. She was, I think, 89 or 90 when I talked to her, talked to her two or three times, uh, just about history and, and, and things like that. Um, but I had no understanding of Russia or Russian ballet or Russian language or anything at that time. So, you know, it, it's hard to, for me to remember exactly how that impacted me, but it surely did. So, but we'll kind of skip that bit and go to where I studied my degree program. So that was uh, pedagogy, classical ballet pedagogy and choreography, because as I've said, they're the same thing. There's no difference. One is the other and one is the other. It's just how it is. So um, the way, I mean, Svetlana can probably tell you better exactly what was said at the time, but my experience in Russia was something like this. 
because I was American and older, so I was, when, when did I start studying? It was probably 30, 30. I was thinking I was 30 when I started. So I was already of some age, and I didn't have like the pedigree that they normally require for you to study in a university there, which is to have dance training from you know some legitimate place, and then you dance, and then you study uh, to be a teacher or a choreographer, or whatever. I didn't have any of that other than here in America, and that didn't mean anything to them. So it was kind of, um, a, a, you know, sort of having to prove myself at a, to an extent that Russians didn't have to, right? Because they all kind of came through sort of, they came through kind of the same path, and I was just this weirdo on the side. But I had talent, and I had some understanding or aptitude, let's say. And I was able to show it pretty, pretty quickly and, and gain some acceptance. And, but here's how, and here's why that happened that way. So the basic philosophical basis for teaching, I think, may, maybe any subject in Russia, I don't know, because I only studied this, is they're not just going to spell it out for you, right? So there, you have a books, but they're, they're not going to... The books are very basic, you know, it just doesn't give you any insight at all. Like, Vaganova book is just nothing. And the thicker books by Tarasov and, and other, other authors uh, in Russian language only, of course, are thicker and more comprehensive, but they still don't, don't really explain the whys of anything, you know, or even the how. It's mostly just, here's what it is. There's uh, five Batmans, and this is what they are, and this is... Blah, blah. And now, sort of looking back, that I've sort of formulated my own method, it, it really wasn't that useful. What was, though, is this. If a student has the insight, I suppose, to ask the right questions, then you get a very different response from the professors, right? And that's just what happened to me. So I just sort of naively... I didn't know that I knew anything, you see what I mean? And so I just started asking the questions that popped into my mind that I had wanted answers to in America, and it kind of turned the professor on to me. The uh, uh, main professor was um, Vadim Utkin, and he's, he's still doing it. He's at GITIS, and most of these professors teach more than one place, but he's mainly at GITIS and then at another university where I graduated and you know some other things and of course Mikhail Lavrovsky is the direct, artistic director of the whole program so I worked with both of them and I just asked questions and for whatever reason they liked my questions and so then they would just focus on me and kind of go into it and then assign me various projects like you know I would just show up but the rest of the students they'd say okay take these students and choreograph something on them but because they're all adults right and some are pro ex-professional dancers or professional and then some are not you know just and he said okay they would just give me conditions right so choreograph something for children but they're adults but I have to dance them like they're you know 11 years old or 10 years old and so I choose music appropriate for that age and craft steps that were appropriate for that age and skill level and then they would perform it and you know I'd have like couple rehearsals maybe two three and then we would do it and it'd be like an exam kind of thing and then they would say okay teach this technique teach Ron de Jean or whatever and I would do it <clears throat> and then we'd debate you know and and I would you know I would have to justify all the things I, I mean everything that I did so the way they begin the music every hand finger every position of the hip and legs and what in the head and everything so just from top to bottom I had to go through it methodically and it just went on like that just out of the blue, I'd show them, like, do this. Okay, you got two days. Show me on, like, I'd be there on Tuesday. They'd say, show me on Thursday. And I had to just figure it all out. And, and that was that. They just basically throw you in the deep end. And if you can swim, then after you kind of prove yourself, then they'll teach you something. But if a person doesn't have the aptitude, if, you know, you'll just get kind of a... A person without, who's not either, maybe has the aptitude, but not willing to do the work or to do the thinking, um, you know, you'll just kind of pass the, the written exams, blah, 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 and, you know, kind of get a, a, a passing grade, but you're not going to advance yourself in ballet in any way. So, um, you know, I passed out, I, um, I was able to accelerate my education because I just passed the exams, mostly, at a certain point. So... 
whatever, I have some aptitude for this, but um, so that, that was a really great learning experience with them. And then mostly it's just experience. I, I did a, a ton of different choreographic projects. I, I worked with some singers, like pop singers, and like sort of musical theater-ish kind of things, pop singers. Um, you know, look, Russia's a dance country and there's so many different projects and things going on all over the place that you can pretty much, especially as a foreigner with some understanding, you, you can, I just was able to get involved in different things. Um, nothing of which paid well, but you know, it was experience. And then Bolsha Academy was, the experience is what mattered most, is what I'm trying to say. So again, same thing, Bolsha Academy, American, you know, now that sort of time, a lot of time has passed, Svetlana just remembers certain things that she didn't have the English skills to translate to me before, but now, now, you know, recently or whatever, when we talked about it, did, that basically it was just a, it was just a joke. I mean, to them, they're like, ah, let's throw this American in the deep end and, and, and just make fun of the dummy. I mean, that's basically what it was. It's fine, you know, it's just what it is. But what happened was I was better than them. It, it, I mean, skill-wise, I'm just telling you, this is what happened, and it just stirred up a hornet's nest in the academy. And this is mainly as a choreographer at this point. I mean, I coached also because you have to, to get the choreography to work right. And I was able to, you know, produce some pretty, you know, I mean, now looking back, it's, it's, it, I find it to be lame, but, but, you know, I had maybe a week and a half or two weeks to choreograph, you know, three couples in a, in a piece or four, what was it, three couples, I think, in the one I'm thinking about. And then a bunch of solo stuff of duets and, and competitions that are in Russia and in Europe. And they won, they all won the competitions and stuff like that. So I was able to get a lot done and sort of ended up with this queue of parents that just, can you do it, can you do it, can you do it? And, you know, of course it's cash. Like, I mean, it was, it was, it, there's, look, I have a sense of humor about myself and about things, but it was funny because you have these old, uh, so Babushki, uh, the grandmothers of the students. And I remember one in particular came and it's like, I don't know how much money it was, some hundreds of dollars to do a, a solo for her for a competition. And she just slapped out just crisp $100, like dollars, bills, American, you know, just crisp right out of the ATM or wherever it came from. And I was like, okay, you know, so Russians, one thing I'll tell you that's I've found different from America is that they just, they, there's no, there's no bullshit, you know, it's like, it's like, here's what I want from you, how much I give the amount and they just do it and it's done. In, in America, there's a weird, there's something going on here that doesn't make sense to me about money and value, but I, I don't want to get into that now, but later I will. So experience is what makes all the difference. I think that's true for everything. You know, if, if you have an aptitude, you, you get, you need a basic information to get started. And then from there, you just start doing it. So that's the answer to those two. Let me leave it here and then I'll do another podcast. Um, answer some more questions, okay?